So our next speaker uh, is going to be Ranjana Sinha from Digby Health. Or Ranjan Sinha, sorry. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ranjan Sinha, founder and CEO of Digby Health. Digby Health is uh, innovative and life uh, transforming company that is focused on about 100 million Americans that have lived under the yoke of one size fits all food, exercise and care pathways and the stigma of lack of self control when they are dealing with obesity and a range of obesity associated comorbidities. And Most of these care guidelines uh, for obesity and a range of comorbidities, whether it's diabetes, prediabetes, inflammatory skin conditions, PCOS, were developed about 50 years ago. Uh, they have not changed, they are obsolete, and consequently they are highly ineffective. The remission rates of these diseases is worse than cancer. Uh, our care framework assumes that obesity clearly is just not a matter of lack of self-control, but it's really the interaction of a person's genetic profile, its microbiome risk profile, interacting with the lifestyle variables of food, maybe the wrong kind of food, exercise, the wrong kind of exercise, sleep, stress, cravings. And the good news is the medical community has started recognizing it. And so Digby Health has built and operationalized the first gut microbiome, DNA-based, uh, uh, multifactorial uh, obesity and obesity comorbidity care platform. Uh, we start with looking at the genetic risk signals, the gut microbiome risk signals. We combine it with blood markers. We look at what we call lifestyle vitals, which is your craving, your stress, your sleep. We use machine learning to aggregate this information, analyze it, and create very precise targeted care pathways for each individual that is supported by a care team of people trained in cognitive behavior therapy, genetic counselors, nutritionists, etc. <clears throat> it is a comprehensive platform, so the mobile app sends the signal to a care dashboard that is managed by a care team, and it's integrated to various EMR, EMR EHRs, and, and trackables. One of the things that's built into the precision care dashboard, any kind of these care platforms will only be paid on the value-based pricing going forward. So our platform does have a value-based pricing built into it along with some CPT codes. So what we do is in real time while we are sending data to the pairs of engagement, patients, physiological markers, we are capturing the same data and in real time risk stratifying the patient in terms of engagement, their physiological markers, and directing the kind and the intensity of care, either through the app or through human touch. Uh, we start, we started a human study in 2018 based on the results. Our weight loss results, hemoglobin sugar reduction markers and engagement markers were two to three X better than all current existing digital and non-digital platforms, which basically got us as the first gut microbiome DNA-based obesity and obesity comorbidity care platform that's now covered by Blue Shield of California, available to about four million members. We went live with them in July of last year. We exited December with 1,203 patients under active care. Uh, based on Blue Shield's data, our app has a disproportionate share of all the apps available on their Revolution platform and it's almost about 4x compared to all others. Uh, these are the range of comorbidities that our care team manages from inflammatory skin, high blood pressure, digestive disorders, and our care team is specialized in these subclasses of disease. So it's not like going to a weight loss where you're treated the same. If you have an obesity issue with PCOS or hypothyroidism, our care team is specialized to deal with that. Uh, our team is fairly a renaissance team. Uh, our uh, chief medical officer uh, used to run obesity for Kaiser. Uh, our care team and our care systems are run by a physician. Uh, and we have a range of PhDs that specialize in gut microbiome and DNA. Uh, what, uh, our, what I call our monopoly value is the data we are collecting. We are the first company that is collecting person's DNA 
we're collecting your longitudinal gut biome because we ship you a gut biome kit, and 12 weeks later, we ship you another gut biome kit. Uh, we are collecting all your physiological markers. We are collecting time series data of your food, your cravings, your sleep patterns, etc. cetera. And, I, and currently, we have at least two pharma companies that are quite interested in, our, uh, in, in that data. I raised a seed round of two and a half million dollars in August of uh, 2018, and uh, I'm looking to raise a Series A sometime middle of this year. And I do have a board approval for about 200K, given I was coming to a conference with doctors, that in case somebody wants to participate in the seed round, we can raise about 200K. So, thank you. Can you talk about revenue today and what you'll see in the next few years? Uh, our booking in it last year, uh, when we went live in July, we booked about $580,000, uh, which was about uh, a close to 1,000 patients. Uh, next year, we plan to exit just through the Blue Shield contract. Uh, probably about four to 5,000 patients, and currently we are at that run rate. So that will give us about uh, $1.8 million. We are in the final stages of closing another contract with a large insurer where we have finalized the value-based pricing. Uh, we'll go live with them probably end of Q1, and they have 14 million lives under coverage. Uh, so I expect to do about, about $4 million in bookings and about $2.2 in revenue next year. Any other question? Anything from the audience? Okay, thank you so much. We'll go to the next. So, any plans, you know, to uh, uh, integrate the data sets that you are, uh, uh, you know, collecting internally? When you say integrate, like omics data with microbiome and oh, uh, multiple. They are, I'm sorry. they are currently being integrated. That's how the AI language decides the, the the care pathway. So, so the data is highly analyzed in real time, including when we look at the cravings data, for example. We are able to dig down into either genetic pattern and, and uh, either if you have any genetic signals, or for example, the classic example I give is uh, when a patient comes in and let's say they have hypertension, the general recommendation is reduce salt. But if you have a genetic variance that you don't respond to it, the general physician believes that you are probably cheating on your diet, so you keep cutting back on salt, it triggers other cravings, which is, so knowing that particular genetic marker gives the doctor a signal and definitely gives our care mechanism uh, signal. So there are a range of these kind of data points that makes the pathway far more targeted, and that's why when you see 3x better results than some of the... Most digital care today is basically taking a 50-year-old and putting a digital layer on it, and you're basically putting digital layer on the old signs. The pharma angle would be your patient population. That would that, that, yeah. They have two layers of interest, obviously, the data, and then they want to use it as what they call as a companion offering. So especially Eli Lilly and Novo Nordis that are in the obesity area. And 